Hello everyone and welcome back to 4FS Gaming. So sometimes when you're playing Hunt Showdown, you can die a lot. And this can be disheartening. It's not nice, but the good news is that deaths in Hunt are seldom random and in the minutes and seconds leading up to your death, there were likely missteps that led to your demise. In this video, we will take a look at the 10 most common errors that lead to death so that you can avoid them and live to die another day. Let's get the big one out of the way first. Crouching is a valuable tool for taking cover, avoiding the occasional sound trap and micro repositioning during compound fights, but it's not a mode of transport. When you crouch, you move slowly. Your head juts out from your body, and this makes you exceptionally easy to headshot. Unless you absolutely have to be crouching, you shouldn't be crouching. Unless you have excellent cover or complete concealment, you should not be crouching. And if you are in line of sight of an enemy, you shouldn't be crouching, ever. Number two is things like burning kennels, chicken coops, and clearing AI unnecessarily. Most of the ambushes I set up successfully are not against teams that shoot everything instead of crows. These players tend to move fast enough to avoid getting trapped, Rather, it's the people using lanterns to destroy dog cages or malaying unnecessary grunts as they leave a compound. Often, the stealthy approach is actually very loud. Using or bursting a lantern can be heard an entire compound over, and the sound of your melee carries extremely far as well. It's much more stealthy to ghost through an area without clearing out any of the sound traps or AI, just trying to avoid them, and as a general rule of thumb, unless you have eyes on an enemy and they are not looking in your direction, it's best to assume that they can hear you. Number three, this is a classic one, peeking the same spot twice. We are all guilty of it. You take a shot, miss, and look out the same window again, sticking your head straight into a bullet. What you should be doing is taking your shot, moving somewhere else, and peeking from there instead. In mid-range gunfights, this simple rule will save you countless deaths over your hunt career. The trick is not to get too greedy and remember it in the moment. Of course, if your opponent is on the run, trying to heal, or is as yet unaware of your position, you can peek as much as you want. Number four is running away from explosives. Now, when a good player maneuvers into position and throws a well-placed frag, running away can often be your worst option. The sound of your footsteps will allow the enemy to perfectly place their throw and air burst to just over your position. But staying still doesn't really help that much either, because if the enemy knows where you're hiding, then you're just gonna die regardless because the grenade will land right next to you. Often, your best bet is to rush the person throwing the grenade. You can usually get close or shoot them while they are cooking, and if they are still alive, you wanna get close enough so that they either throw the grenade at the ground, killing both of you, that's better than you just dying, or throwing it far away, effectively negating the attack and giving you more moments to kill them before they can ready your weapon. Number five, sticking close to partners. You need to spread out. This is a massive issue I see when playing with randoms or teams of newer players. They all run together in a tight group. This makes you not only much more vulnerable to ambushes and explosives, it limits your tactical options when you engage in a gunfight, and it also makes you much less perceptive when you have other people stomping along next to you. By spreading out, you can hear a lot more because there is less audio interference, and your team's radius of audio coverage is much larger. You should make sure that you're mostly still in line of sight to each other and can assist if one member of the team meets danger. Number six, bad revives. Combat revives, necromancer revives, all of these can turn the tide of a battle, but all too often they result in the death of inexperienced players. Someone going for a revive is very, very predictable, it leaves you vulnerable, and it forces you to remain still. If your friend has been downed, don't revive until you have taken some action to either distract, push back, or just flat out kill the attackers. Once you have created an opportunity to revive, take it, but instantly reviving downed partners is going to make you fodder for a wall bang or explosive. Number seven, camping the extract. It might sound like a good idea. You get to wait there for all of the other teams to take on the risk. They fight each other, they fight the boss let them wait out the banish, and then you get the jump on them right at the end as they reach an extract. Well, it's actually a pretty terrible tactical decision. Firstly, this is when the bounty carriers will be the most prepared and the most vigilant. It is an expected tactic. They will have dark sight, and even if they've run out, the extract will make noise, letting them know that you're close. They will be at full health and ammo after stocking up at the boss compound before leaving. They will have had the opportunity to regenerate health bars lost early in the match because they might have banished the boss. 
They will have had opportunities to loot back consumables from dead hunters and item boxes. You will be going up against the cream of the crop in terms of looted weapons from all of the other teams in the match. By camping in Extract, you're essentially putting yourself against the most powerful possible version of the team that entered the match at the start of the game. You are also likely to be wedged up against the map edge, limiting your positioning options, while they will have the choice to move anywhere. So if you can't make it to the boss compound before the banish finishes, then of course try and intercept the carriers as they move out, but waiting on an extract, uh, this is likely to get you killed. Number 8 is ignoring the AI. And this is one for more experienced hunters, myself included, as you play more and more you get increasingly kill hungry. The AI monsters can be viewed as an inconvenient distraction as you mercilessly rush down upon a fleeing hunter. Now this works well until they evade you for just a little bit too long, and then you have six dogs, two hives and an immolator charging you down. With good traversal routes, jumping on and over obstacles, closing doors, you can evade a lot of AI during pursuit, but it's always a bit dangerous. If you want to be extra safe, clear as you go even when chasing. Gunslinger. You can use whatever control setup you want, but I've lost count of the number of kills gifted to me due to enemy weapons jutting through walls, simply because they're using the Gunslinger control setup and aren't aware of its limitations. Uh, Gunslinger's fine to use if you prefer it, I definitely don't, you just need to be very aware that your weapon's going to be sticking out in front of you and position yourself accordingly. And finally, number 10, passive play. In Hunt, when an opportunity presents itself, you need to seize it. You can play slow, play careful, but when an enemy is down and their partner is out of position, you need to make the most of these opportunities. When you're defending a boss lair with shotguns and an impatient team on the outside gets right up to throw explosives in, then that's your chance. Your bait has worked. Rush out and gun them down at close range. Because I can tell you now that any player worth their salt isn't going to walk into your trapped up and shotgunned boss lair. When your partner is in a gunfight, engage at maximum speed. Kill that distracted opponent rather than skulking around being scared to reveal yourself. Careful planning and patience are very important in Hunt, but decisive action at key moments is what's going to win you fights. All too often I've seen teams that have had an advantage against us just not capitalize it because they were too scared to push even when they really were dominating the field in terms of positioning and manpower. I know that I'm guilty of a handful of these even after thousands of hours, which is why I love Hunt. There's always something more to work on. Let me know if you have anything to add in the comments below, and check out Twitter and Discord for updates in the description. A massive thank you to our Patreon supporters, and for all of our viewers for watching. Catch you next time, this is Ascendance from 4FS Gaming.